First and ten, Hoover Bucks. I'm getting a little chain gang placement on the side. That's the reason for the momentary holdup in the action. We are just delighted you could join us along the Super 6 statewide network tonight. This the culmination of two days of great football here at Jordan Hare Stadium on the loveliest village in the play, the Auburn University campus. And another flag goes down. Call and Daphne, did you catch what that was, Cole? Sideline warning. They're first. So it doesn't cost them any yardage on the first call. So after all the dust clears, first and 10 Hoover, ball on the 14 yard line. They go to MacArthur off left tackle. Number seven, Justin MacArthur. Off Three tough tackle. yards. Big Eric Lee from his defensive end spot, 95, helping on that stop. Like the job of that three-man front. You see the linebackers fill on the right side of your screen in that replay, really come up, challenging the lead blockers, giving that running back from Hoover no holes in sight. MacArthur will remain the lone running back in the backfield. Carter lines him up second and seven. And Eric Daphne Lee again. All, all over the sweep play. It's Eric Lee, 95, the six foot, 190 pound junior. Trying to go to a little zone read sweep, I guess, outside play. Well, you got to give credit to the Staffney defense. They just don't give up, do they? They've made a few young guys. Made a few big plays, like you mentioned, Ken, and then to be backed up in this situation. They've had some just terrible breaks. And now we're going to get a timeout by the Hoover Bucks. Clock down to the 114 mark here in the second quarter. Hoover leading it by a score of six to nothing. They struck on a touchdown pass in the early going to Reginald Johnson. The extra point was missed by Larson Reel. And that's the only scoring that we've had so far. Daphne had a 43 yard run for a touchdown by TJ Yeldon. That was called back on a holding penalty. And then they apparently had Hoover stopped on a big interception by Minifield. But that was nullified by a penalty as well. So how many bad breaks can Daphne withstand and hang in the football game? Well, they haven't played exceptional football thus far. Defensively, I think they have minus a couple big plays on offense, and they're only it's only six nothing. You, you can escape here with a field goal. Yeah, boy, if you're Coach Glenn Vickery, you have to look up at the scoreboard and say, "Wow, we're still in the ball." Well, game. Like you mentioned, it was middle of the second quarter until they crossed midfield. Right. Offensively. All right, Hoover lines up with a third down. 13 yards to go. They can get a first down by getting it down just inside the five. Carter in trouble, bails out, and he's going to be sacked on the 18-yard line. Great pressure by that front three from Daphne. Aggressive pass rush. Here you see the replay. will play action. Linebacker jet blitz up the middle. Both Stop defensive ends, Ryan Anderson and Eric Lee providing the pressure. Well, we've been talking about the speed on this Four Hoover defense. 14. Daphne showing you a little chasing speed there as well. Number 20, Larson Real. So Larson Real lines up from the 26 yard line. That'll make it a 36 yard field goal attempt. He missed an earlier attempt from 48 yards. Bad snap. And they're going to get buried back on the 33. You're ecstatic now if you're adapted to coach <laughs> the staff. We just mentioned escaping with a field goal would be tremendous. Now you're going to get the football back. Only 20 seconds That's until the half, ball. so I expect First them to just on the a high percentage run play, maybe even take a knee, get to the half, only trailing six. Wow. 
And if you're on the Daphne sideline, you're probably saying there is justice after all. Absolutely. After some of the calls they got Without there. a doubt. All right, 20 seconds left to tick off the clock here in the first half. Mosley, the quarterback. Yeldon, the one back behind him. See if they try anything too risque here. Steps up, wants it all, and he gets the pass complete to Lamprakis. Stayed up. Lamprakis takes a couple of guys with him. No timeouts. He burned them all. That's right. Clock will stop for the first down. Mosley will try to ground the football here. We've got eight seconds on the clock. So much for playing it conservative at the end of the half. Official rolls the clock. Mosley grounds the football. Seven seconds to play. Now Daphne's kicker is a young man by the name of Brandon Roberts. He's a 5'9", 150-pound junior. He missed from 33 yards out earlier in the game. I don't think field goal is even an option here, Kim, but if Mosley can get it to the end zone, you just take a shot. I wouldn't be surprised if it's in the area of Justin Jackson, number eight, 6'4", 175 pounds. Here it comes, big looping pass, and it is incomplete. Clock shows one second to play. He is looking here down the near sideline for Jonathan McGaster, who caught a big pass earlier in the game. Third down 10. Gaster, you're only a sophomore. Not bad. Playing at Jordan Hare Stadium in the state 6A championship game as a sophomore. So this will be the final play of the first half, one way or the other. For what it's worth, it's a third down play, but the down and distance are irrelevant here. He's going to throw it into a crowd, and it's going to get intercepted, and that'll be the end of the first half. Pass picked off down the far sideline by Montez Carlton, who is all over the field. And that ends what I would call a very intriguing first half, kind of a crazy first half in a lot of ways. I would absolutely agree, and we talked in pregame that we thought there would be a lot of points put on the board. Both of these offenses have had a lot of success this season. But so far, it's been a game of penalties and really and truly just stagnant offenses. All right, Chris Womack is ready down on the field with one of the coaches. Chris, let's go down to you. All right, thanks, guys. Coach, your team has dominated the field position battle. How do you turn that good field position into points on the board? Well, we got to execute. We're not executing right now. You know, we got to finish drives. We talked about finishing every drive. We turn the ball over down here. We're not converting, you know, on first down. We're getting in the red zone, and we're not doing a very good job. Our defense is playing pretty good right now, keeping them out of the end zone. We've got to do a better job executing on offense. Jalen Denson's made some big catches for you so far. How important is it to keep him rolling going into the well, second half? Well, it's always big. He's a big part of our offense, but we've got to do a really good job of being able to run the football, try to loosen him up a little bit, maybe get him in some man situations. All right, thank you, Coach. Thank you. That was Coach Josh Niblett. His team takes a 6 to nothing lead into halftime at the 6A state finals. It's all part of the Jacks AHSAA Super 6. Coming up after the break, we're going to have coach talk and some reaction from the guys up in the booth. Welcome back into halftime at the 6A state final. Hoover currently leads Daphne 6 to nothing. Earlier this week, we had the opportunity to sit down with Coach Nib Niblett and Coach Vickery, talk about the seasons and talk about the players that led them to Jordan-Hare today. Well, I mean, of course, our highs are that we're 14-0, and 0, you know, coming into this football game. Uh, you know, the highs also are this senior class. You know, this was a class three years ago when I first came to Hoover. Uh, that, you know, were sophomores and uh, they kind of understood what was expected of them. And, you know, the, uh, the biggest thing I think about them is they want to leave a legacy, you know, and that's what we've talked about. And, you know, the highs of our season have been being region champions. You know, we've, you know, we've had to play two teams in the playoffs that we played in the, you know, in the regular season with Spain Park and Mountain Brook to advance. And, uh, but, I, you know, as far as the lows, I just think we had a few injuries in a few spots uh, that, you know, we were kind of, you know, having the, and I guess that became a high because guys had to step up. But, um, you know, but, you know, as far as lows go, I mean, you know, there's, there might have been a few lows within a game, but as far as the season goes, I mean, I, 
you know, I think we've had more highs than we have lows. Uh, so, you know, I think you'd probably have to evaluate it <laughs> maybe a different way, but uh, we've been blessed. Well, there's no doubt. I mean, these guys have been around the program for three years. Uh, they've been the state championship two years before this one. They've won one. Uh, but I think this group, it's, it was a little different. You know, I think for last year's group felt like they had to win one because they were the only class that didn't have a ring. This group just, group just loves to compete. It doesn't matter whether it's in practice, seven-on-seven seven drills in the summer, lineman challenges, you know, in the weight room, they love to compete, you know, and it's, it's, it's not about winning or losing. It's about just getting an opportunity to compete and be at our best. And these guys have had a big influence uh, on the rest of our team, and I think that's what's given us a chance to be successful. Well, I, I, I don't know it's much different. I think the biggest thing is just being competitive uh, and how much they love to compete. You know, and then how they persevere. You know, we've had guys that's been injured. You know, there's been part of the years where we've been a little bit banged up and guys have had to step up, you know, and, you know, but I don't think these guys have really, you know, been, I guess you'd say, having to count on one guy to go make a play. I think everybody's tried to collectively do their job, and that's kind of our motto is do your job, and collectively they've been able to do that, and I think that's what's given us an opportunity uh, to be pretty good. Uh, you know, as far as how it's different from other teams, I don't know. I mean, I guess somebody from an outside would have to come in and kind of evaluate that. You know, I think going to Burns the first game of the year and playing on ESPN, taking our kids on that trip was an awesome trip and uh, being on primetime TV and I think that was something special for our program and special for our kids and that's something we really, really enjoyed and, uh, and I'll always remember that, you know. But, but more than that, I mean, there's days at practice I'll remember more than probably than the games because, uh, you know, like I said before, this group loves to compete. And then when you compete, and uh, then that means when it's time to battle, you're going to be at your best. And, uh, but but just, just remembering these kids and our coaches, I think, was a special year. You know, it's, it's been mainly highs, quite honestly. You know, we're undefeated. And um, haven't been a lot of lows. Uh, our kids have really responded. Uh, we brought in a new defensive coordinator, Bart Sessions, and, um, you know, got him sort of late in the summer, and uh, so our kids uh, were late getting started on some, some new ideas, and, uh, but really, you know, our defensive guys really rallied around Coach Sessions and our other defensive coaches. You know, we had a good summer. We were 24-1 and in 7-on-7 competition, qualified for Hoover, uh, but we're, o we're over our seven days, and uh, so we didn't come. And uh, so, you know, it's been sort of a confidence builder all summer. We knew that, you know, coming out of the summer, we, we were pretty good at skill spots and pretty good in secondary. And uh, we had to put it all together and get those linemen, you know, there and, and, and see what you really have. And it's really been mostly highs. We hadn't, uh, you know, we've had uh, very few injuries, uh, maybe one season ending injury, you know, and at, at, at 6A football, that's pretty good. A lot of those guys were starters last year, and, and I think there's nothing like game experience. I think that, that's so true in, in high school football. And, you know, you have to, you have to create leaders. Um, you know, I sort of wish they were more natural-born leaders, but, uh, you know, we encourage leadership, and we strongly uh, we push it. Our coaches encourage it and push it. But the seniors make the difference because, you know, they've had two years, you know, some of them two, two years of experience on the field. And they've been under the lights, under the pressure, and then they can they can teach others those game tight conditions and what it takes. I mean, you, you know, you get in the playoffs; it's a one game season, and those seniors have been there, and I think they pass that down to the, the younger guys. It's, it's really a, a well balanced team. Uh, you know, last night against Davis and our quarterback threw for five touchdowns. Well, the week before we ran for five touchdowns, and and so it's just a balanced team offensively. Uh, you know, we have we have good running backs, we have good skill, and our quarterback you know manages our team and does a great job. Uh, and defensively, you know, we don't have that big all-state guy here, all-state guy there. We're just you know 11 guys, and actually we play about 19 guys on defense, and it's really a, a you know it's been a team effort over there, and our kicking game has been well, so it's really a well-balanced team. You know, probably, you know, just you know, it, it's been several games where I can just see those seniors are so pleased with themselves. I don't think there's one 
uh, when you get my age, you know, you don't just cherish one, you cherish a bunch. And, you know, just seeing our seniors react to a big win and, you know, feeling good about all the hard work. You know, you've been on the side where you do the hard work and you spend the time, but you don't always have the success that you would hope for kids. And, you know, as the older I get, I mean, I really want it for those guys. I mean, it's, you know, it's a hundred, it's a hundred children. And, you know, we, we know what we want for our own children. We want them to make A's and B's, hit home runs, and, you know, be the, be the co-captain of the cheerleading squad. And you want that for your players. And my, you know, my biggest thrill is just seeing those guys happy. You know, I've been happy for a long time. And, and, and they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna go down this road one time. And seeing them succeed, one, seeing them mature. Because when we get them, a lot of times they're not very mature. You know, I call them, you know, eighth grade mentality, middle school mentality. And just seeing that maturity and some of those kids we kicked out of the weight room for being immature now, they're the leaders in the weight room. So it's really a daily thing, not so much a, after a ball game, but just seeing guys who, who we had to get on to early, now you know, they're teaching our young guys the, the way that it should be at Daphne High School and that the playoffs are special, the weight room is special. Hey, let's go to work. Womack is down on the field with Coach Glenn Vickery of Daphne. Let's go down to Chris. Thanks, guys. Coach, your defense was given a short field time and time again, but yet they only gave up six points. How proud are you of them, and what do they need to do in the second half? Well, we, we got to move the football, you know, get some first downs, get some touchdowns, and give credit to Hoover's defense. I mean, defense, our defense is playing really well. We got to get the offense on that page, blocking better and running better. You know, we just got to go play our game. And, uh, it hasn't changed. Blocking and tackling wins the game. We got to block a little better and move the stakes and uh, you know, make some plays, and uh, we'll be fine. We just got to come back with some confidence and uh, you know, just challenge our kids to turn it loose. Let's go play. How do you plan to get uh, T.J. Yeldon and Tyrell Holloway moving? Well, you know, Hoover's done a great job of taking away some pulls on us, and you know, we got we, we made some adjustments. We got to get the ball outside a little bit, throw the ball a little bit, and uh, you know, we got to make plays. Those guys have to run for us to win. All right, thank you, Coach. Yes, all right, that wraps up our halftime action. When we come back, Ken and Cole will have your second half action. This is the 6A Super 6A final. Hoover leaving, leading Daphne six to nothing. It's the AHSAA Super Six brought to you by Jax. We approach the kickoff of the second half. The Hoover Bucks leading by a score of six to nothing. Cole Kubilik, former Auburn football star, former Homewood High School star. What do you look for here in the second half from both of these teams? Well, I think both teams need to continue to try to get the run game going. Neither team surpassed the 20 yard mark in the first half. Getting it going on the ground, I think will be key for both of these squads. Hoover obviously wants the play action game to go, which has already worked and led to one touchdown, the deep ball. I think you'll see both teams continue to take chances down the field. I think Daphne has made no secret about who their two playmakers are, and Hoover continues to challenge with Denson down the field. So we know what's going to happen. It's a matter of executing, limiting those mistakes that we saw in the first half. You saw that Daphne will receive the kickoff to start the second half. The 6A game is the culmination of two full days of football here at Jordan Hare. We want to congratulate all of our 2010 state high school football champions. Let's go over them real quick. In 1A, Sweetwater shut out R.A. Hubbard, 36 to nothing. In 2A, it was Leroy, 34, Real Town, 7. The Leeds Green Wave have won another 3A championship over Hamilton, 42 to 32. Thomasville in a shootout in 4A over Deschler, 59 to 34. And in 5A, it was Spanish Ford shutting out Briarwood Christian, 14 to nothing. Cole, there really has not been a real close game yet in the Super Six. This may be the first one. I think it will be. And if you're Daphne's coaching staff, you're feeling pretty good about yourself. Even though you're down six to nothing, based on field position, this game easily could have been 21-0 at the half. Larson Real kicking off, and that football is going to trickle into the end zone and the Daphne Trojans will take over first and 10 on their own 20 yard line. Quarterback will be Russ Mosley. The Trojans have moved the ball on occasion. T.J. Yeldon has been their go-to guy in the backfield tonight so far, but they just haven't been able to break the ice in the red zone. 
as we mentioned just a little bit earlier, they had a 43 yard touchdown run call back on a holding penalty. First and 10 play. Mosley right upstairs. And that's a nice gain out there to the 28 yard line. That's Lamprakis on the catch. Lamprakis does so many things for this team. He sure does. 61 carries on the season, 31 receptions, 10 total touchdowns. Coach Glenn Vickery says even on occasion they'll drop him back into a little wildcat, let him take the snap from center. You may see that before the night is over. Second and two. That is Lamprecus right there. Called it, huh? Number <laughs> one. <laughs> well, I think on the one big drive that Daphne had, when they moved the football with success, they really mixed it up on offense from a formation standpoint, different play calls. And it was that one speed option out of the pistol that was called back. So I look for this offense to continue to change things up, continue to try to do things different, keep the Hoover defense off balance. Short yardage play, third down and two. They're gonna try to run for it around the side with Holloway, and he's got the first down. Good spring block there on the right side as he gets to the 33 yard line. Pick up of five. Good job by that offensive line, just pulling around. Big Hunter brought us 63. TJ Jackson, 55. It's a veteran offensive front for the Trojans. First down play on the 33. Mosley, a little confusion in the backfield, and that play was never meant to be. He'll swallow about a yard. Number one, Israel Lampakis on the keeper. Well, Lampakis was a quarterback taking that direct snap in the pistol That's formation right, again. And just down. miscommunication, I think, on play where they the wanted yard. that lead play to go. Lampakis looked at the hand at right. Yeldon went left. <laughs> left with a two-yard loss. And then went nowhere. So make it second down. It's called a short 12. Mosley this time throws to Lamprakis. He's got it at the 41. He's going to be about two yards shy of the first down. Hoover caught playing a soft zone on this play. Nice play by Mosley in the pocket. Good protection up front by that offensive line. Much more manageable third down here with a third and three. Third down two. They were able to convert on the last third and short. And there is absolutely nothing that Coach Glenn Vickery and his staff would like better than for Daphne to pull off a long ball control drive here to start the second half. Looks like the heavy package is in. Mosley is out of the game. Lamprakis directly from center. First down to the 45. That was Yeldon, not Lamprakis. Heck of a conversion for Yeldon. Takes a direct snap. Just really quarterback power, off right tackle. Look at that. Little seam. Finds a way to slip through. Picks up the first down. Keep the chains moving. Nice opening drive here for the Trojans. There's no telling who Daphne's going to line up behind center. Well, it's like I've been saying, Kenya. They have to mix it up. Keep changing yeah. it around. Keep that Hoover defense on their heels. First and 10 from the 46. This is a wide side pitch to Holloway. And he does a nice job right at the very end of that run. Good finish to cap off about a six yard pickup. I think you hit it when you said finish. Speed option again at a shotgun. Look at that block downfield by Yeldon. Jackson in on a block. Looked like Hoover had it stacked up till the very end of the play. Second down. Is that quarterback again? Four yards to go. And again, a little laboring on the handoff there. Looked like Yeldon for no gain or even a loss. Tyler Roberts from his defensive end spot, penetration, makes a play, really just goes unblocked. That was Excuse Holloway. Me, that's actually 99 Brad Shaw, 5'11", 230-pound junior. So now you got a little more of a challenge on third down. Third and six.
He's going to keep it. Got the first down at the 42-yard line. Mosley showing you he can carry the mail a little bit too. Absolutely, and a great play call because we haven't really seen the design run by Mosley. That's why they've been exchanging personnel, going to somewhat of wildcat formations with Lampakis and Yeldon in at quarterback. All of a sudden now Mosley takes a direct snap and runs for another first down. That's three consecutive third down conversions on this drive by the Trojans. Chewing up a lot of clock. We approach the seven minute mark of the third quarter. Handoff up the middle. Yeldon breaks a tackle close to another first down at the 33. Sensing a little bit of rhythm for this Daphne Trojan offense. Just the zone read draw. Kind of a delay handoff. Yeldon, good patience, allowing that offensive line to get up to the second level of defenders. Puts him now a second and two. Ball on the 35. Mosley taking the snap. Little swing out here in the flat. It's going to be another first down inside the 30 to the 29 to Holloway. Ken, this route's been there all day, as you see on the replay. Just the back in the now flat, out of the backfield. Heck of a play by 61, yeah, Jeremy Boyd, Boy, the defensive first lineman, down. coming all the way from the interior to make that tackle out on the numbers. Drive started on the Daphne 20 yard line. They've moved to four consecutive first downs. It's on the Hoover 29. This is going to be Mosley taking the snap. Got plenty of time to survey the defense. It's a handoff up the middle for very little gain. Boy, yep. lucky that they had any gain whatsoever. Tyler Roberts, defensive end, unblocked again. Look at him screaming down that line of scrimmage. Look for maybe a fake off that zone read right there. Would be a nice play call. If your defensive ends are going to come flat, hard down the line of scrimmage, you pull that ball out and either run it from the quarterback spot or try to get rid of it quickly and pass. Second down and nine play. Ball is on the Hoover 28. Little Wildcat, Lamprakis is going to keep. Thrown for a loss at the 30-yard line. So the Hoover defense suddenly bows up and says, no more of this stuff. Well, you're beginning to see seven, eight black shirts inside the tackle box on every play. Two plays on this, on this series, we've seen an uncovered receiver in the slot. Daphne not taking advantage of that. The Buccaneers now saying, if you're going to beat us, you're not going to beat us on the ground. Third down and 10. Mosley. And that pass is intercepted by Hoover. And that's going to end the drive on the 21 yard line. So Mosley throwing the ball into coverage. And it was Montez Carlton who picked that ball off. So when we come back, the Hoover Bucks with their first possession of the second half. Six to nothing, Hoover. You're watching the 6 8 title game on the Super 6 Network. It's the AHSAA Super 6 brought to you by Jax, Ken Lass, along with Cole Kubelik, Chris Womack down on the sideline. The Hoover Bucks take over first and 10, ball on their own 21 yard line after an interception. And a handoff goes up the middle to Justin MacArthur, and pretty tough going there. Stop for little or no gain. Second down. Well, once again, the Daphne Trojans kind of their own worst enemy in this football game. Yeah, just a bad decision by Russ Mosley on that last interception. Really believed that he had preset in his mind where he was going to deliver that football, and it just wasn't there. Gain of two yards by MacArthur. Second and eight. Flip over the middle is caught by Jalen Denson. Looks like he's got a first down on the 31 yard line. Give him a gain of about nine yards on the play. We'll play action zone read. Gonna hit Denson on the slant. Executed very well. So we'll see if Hoover can answer now with a little ball control of their own. Again, Carter out of the shotgun. They've run that all night long. They'll just plug MacArthur up the middle for another three or so. Number seven, Justin MacArthur. MacArthur will sleep well tonight. He's been the workhorse 
for this Hoover running game thus far. Tackle by 45, Pierce Parker. Ball just up nosing to the 35 yard line of Hoover. Second down, seven. Second down and seven for the Bucks. They scored early on on a long pass to Reginald Johnson. That's been the only scoring of the football game. Larson Real missed the extra point. Oh, Carter juggling a little bit on second and seven. Now he's going to roll out of the pocket and he's going to go down. That's the same play that they had the big touchdown pass on earlier, Ken. Kind of that double fake. Want to hit the deep post to Denson. He's not open. Here you see the replay. Going to fake the end around, fake the zone read. Nobody home. Pretty good protection initially. And then Ryan Anderson comes from the backside. The 6'3", 210-pound junior defensive end racks up his ninth sack of the season. Some props to the Daphne secondary, too, there. Absolutely. And like I said earlier in the broadcast, I think Hoover just trying to force that deep ball down the sideline to Denson a few too many times. Daphne knows what's up. Third down, eight yards to go for the Bucks. Quick pass out here to MacArthur, and he couldn't find the handle. Ruled incomplete. And Hoover's going to have to punt the football away. Brings up a fourth down at eight. And MacArthur looking downfield a little prematurely. Just a tough break there. That's plenty of green in front of him. I think easily he picks up the first down, would have a full head of steam when he met any defender coming his way. Israel Lamprakis, a 5'11", 160-pound senior, back to return this Hoover punt. He calls for the fair roll. catch. He'll let that drop. A little reverse bounce at about the 34-yard line. We're going to take a break. Hoover leading the 6A title game by a score of 6 to nothing, And you're watching the action right here on the Super 6 Network. Welcome back to Jordan-Hare Stadium. Number 98 for Hoover is Max Elliott. He has committed to the Air Force Academy, a 6'4", 241-pound senior. We come back to the live action. Daphne throwing the bomb, and he's got a man down here on the 30-yard line. A great catch out there by Justin Jackson. So after running the football virtually all the way down the field on their first possession, they set him up for that little play action pass. Absolutely, and such a big target. 6'4", 175 pounds, attacks the football at its highest point. Textbook wide receiver play. So here again, Daphne down in scoring territory. Can they avoid the big mistake? Mosley keeping the football. He's got another first down down about the 16-yard line, 12-yard gain. Now time and time again when they've gotten down here, Daphne has shot themselves in the foot. Can they execute this time? Well, we've seen Russ Mosley now. Last two possessions come up with big design runs from the quarterback position. This is where you have to capitalize. Inside the red zone, you're down six to nothing. 6A state championship game. This is TJ Yeldon on a sweep to the right. A lot of pursuit. The ball is loose and it goes out of bounds. But it doesn't look like there's any change of possession down there. Yeldon lost the handle on it, but it appears Daphne's going to retain it. Number four, TJ Yeldon. It appeared that it was close to losing possession. The Hoover the players are still are saying we got it. the ball, but there's the official indication. It's Daphne's ball. Ball rolled, out of ball rolled out of bounds before anybody could establish possession, so it goes to the team that had possession. That, of course, is Daphne. Get about a three-yard gain out of it. Second down and a long six as the ball noses up to the hash mark at the 13-yard line. Daphne trailing, six to nothing. Mosley, quick pass out on the flat is incomplete. Ball hit the ground. It was intended out there for Jonathan McGaster. Have to do a better job with the pre-snap recognition. Three receivers and two defensive backs to the near side. Like we talked about on the interception, Ken, Mosley seems to have an idea exactly where he wants to go before the snap. So here's a critical third down. Third down and a long six or make it seven from the Hoover 14 yard line. Big play in this football game. Mosley the quarterback. 
Quick pass out here to Yeldon. He's not going to get there. Stopped about two yards short at the nine yard line. So now you got a decision, fourth and two or so. You really do. It's a pretty good effort here by Yeldon. You see him juke Terrence Glaze. And then to finish, the lean forward for about an extra two yards. Puts him at a fourth and three. Not sure how confident this Daphne coaching staff is with their field goal unit. Looks like they're going to bring them out regardless. Yeah, their kicker is uh, Brandon Roberts. He missed from about 33 yards in the first half. And now a timeout is being called by Daphne with 142 to play in the third quarter. And Daphne just seems to have trouble getting their special teams out on the field tonight. <laughs> well, you have to think that now you go to the sidelines and you consider drawing up a play on offense to come out, try to get this first down and continue this drive, get a score where an extra point can put you ahead. But field goal, not so bad. If you think you can get this through, you cut the lead in half, a field goal ties it, touchdown puts you in the lead. Your defense has been playing extremely well here in the second half. Well, this is what that missed extra point early in the game starts to figure in strategically. It does. A lot of people don't think about that until later in the game when it comes up, but absolutely. That's why you're okay with a field goal here because another field goal ties it. All right, then on the other hand, if you're the Daphne coaching staff, you have to stop and ask yourself, how many more times are we going to get down this close against this Hoover defense? There will be no field goal. They're going to go for it. Offense back on the field. Hoover trying to change personnel on the fly. Fourth and about two. Direct snap to Yeldon, and he's got the first down. It appears well, that anyway. spot's going to be close. Yep. Where he fell forward, he was close to the five yard line. He needed to get to the six. But it depends on the spot. He might have bounced an extra yard or two. Well, they did not give him a favorable spot. No, they're going to measure it. That is really close. Keep in mind, it's we're talking about a young man at 6'3". It's where the knee is down. It was an interesting change of heart by the uh, Daphne coaching staff. You don't, you don't take a timeout to make a decision of Give your kicker a rest. <laughs> exactly. They didn't get it. They're short. Wow. What a stop by the Hoover defense. Well, you call on your defense here, Ken. You show confidence in them. They have to go out and get a stop. And as, as we said, I'm sure the uh, Daphne coaching staff probably has a couple of problems with the spot of that football because it looked as though Yeldon bounced down to the five yard line. So Hoover takes over first and 10 with a ball on the six and a half. Nearing the end of the third quarter. And the handoff goes up the middle for a short gain. Showing 100% confidence in the defense. 0% confidence in the field goal team. These young men on the defensive side of the ball must step up now. Hoover may play it very conservative here, deep in their own territory. They've got the lead. Why take unnecessary chances? It's a second down and about a seven play. Cannot take a sack. It's Justin MacArthur. They're laying for him straight up the gut. No gain, third down and long. Clock ticks on the 50 second mark. He met Cartels Young right in the backfield. And this defensive line for Daphne has really stood up here in the second half. Ryan Anderson, Daquan Abel, Roderick Tate, Eric Lee have spent a lot of time in the backfield. Third down play, delayed handoff, MacArthur, nothing doing. And so Hoover is going to punt from their own end zone. A big stop by the Daphne defense. And that play may take us to the end of the third quarter. 
And what a final frame this is going to be from Jordan Hare. We hope you're going to stay with us because we have got a great finish coming up in the 6-8 title game. That's the end of the third quarter. Hoover hanging on to a 6-0 lead, but they punt from their own end zone when we come back. You're watching the 6-8 title game on the Super 6 Network. And the pregame walk is brought to you by Ford, and that's the Daphne Trojans walking into the stadium before the football game tonight. Earlier this evening, we showed you the Hoover Bucks and their pregame walk. Brought to you by Ford. You're watching the AHSAA Super 6, and that is brought to you by Jax. I'm Ken Lass, along with former Auburn football star Cole Kubelik. Chris Womack is our man down on the sidelines. As expected, we've got a dandy for you as we start the fourth quarter of play. Six to nothing Hoover. But as we get back into play, the Bucks are going to be punting from their own end zone. And Cole, you, you look for Daphne to open it up again after having had a little success with the pass game on that last possession. I think you have to. You look at the third quarter statistics here. Daphne has outgained Hoover 229 yards to 164. 14 rushing yards on 22 carries for Hoover. So this defense really has stepped up for Daphne and played extremely well. The two turnovers, without a doubt, are the difference for the Hoover Buccaneers right now. All right, Israel Lamprakis, the 5'11", 160-pound senior, will stand on the Hoover 35-yard line to field this punt. see if Daphne tries to apply a little pressure here or if they pull back. Well, they're coming. The punt is away. It's short. Lampracus from the 37 and about a four-yard return. Can't ask for very much better field position than that. And a penalty flag comes down. A late flag in the tussle over the tackle. We'll see what the call is here. The lone score in the football game so far, a long touchdown pass from Ryan Carter to Reginald Johnson. Here's the call. And Daphne is going to get a dead ball. Oh, it's on both teams, Daphne and Hoover. Offsetting personal fouls. These kids are starting to take this a little serious, huh? Uh, and with good reason. You're on the basically 32 yard line. Well, referee just backs it up a yard, so let's make it the 33 yard line. First and 10, you're down six. 6A six state championship game on the line. Trying to make something happen. Living up to billing. This is Lamprakis on a direct snap. And the play is stopped before it gets underway. It's not really what I had in mind. <laughs> Comes the call. <laughs> Got a false start on the Trojans. Daphne has just time and again run into trouble when they're knocking on the door. This backs him up five. Put the ball on the 38-yard line of Hoover. Still first down, first and 15 now. Daphne has had a series of people take the snap behind center, which is not unusual for them. This is Mosley with a quick pass out in the flat to Jonathan McGaster. He gains the penalty yardage back again, but that's about it. We'll put the ball down on the 31. And nice it's pick up there for Daphne. Put him in a second and nine. Soft coverage in the slot here to the near side. I think Daphne needs to attack this. Four wide for the Trojans. Pass out on the flat is caught by uh, Euphrakis. Lamprakis is out of bounds at the 23 yard line. So Daphne choosing to throw the ball in front of the defense on two plays in a row. 
Gives them a very manageable third down now, third and three. And as far as I'm concerned, Kim, this is four down territory. They're, they're not going to punt this close. I don't think they can get a field goal from here. Big play and the handoff is to Holloway. Cuts inside, first down, 10, five. Out of bounds at the one yard line. Tyrell Holloway. No flags on the field. First and goal, Daphne. He got that big block, that spring block at the line of scrimmage. He really did. Looked like a Hoover player shaking up. Daphne fans waiting all night for something to cheer about. As we said, the Trojans have been knocking on the door all night long. Some sort of misfortune always happening either in the form of a turnover or a penalty. But this by far their best shot right now. Just the lead off left tackle. You see the one broken tackle there. Able to take that ball inside the five. Great ball effort. The one yard line and now Daphne being called off the field. And we're going to have a stoppage in play. Timeout on the field. And we'll take a break as well. It was Hoover taking the timeout. Six to nothing Bucks, but Daphne on the doorstep. You're watching the 6A Finals on the Super 6 Network. First and goal for the Daphne Trojans on the Hoover one-yard line. Direct snap to T.J. Yeldon, over right tackle, touchdown, Daphne! We have a tie football game. 10.57 to play in the ball game. Now it comes down to Brandon Roberts and a very important extra point. Absolutely, direct snap, T.J. Yeldon takes it over left guard, dives into the end zone. This is for the lead. Hoover kicker Larson Real missed the point after conversion on the Hoover touchdown back in the first quarter. There's the kick and it is good. And for the first time in the football game, the Daphne Trojans have the lead, seven to six. So now we see how Hoover, the defending champion, will respond. We're gonna get an idea of what they're made of now. This Hoover offense has had some success with big plays, but has not been consistent. And they're gonna to need to put it together. We'll see how they respond. This is a team, like we mentioned in the opening, been here, done that. Championship games are nothing new to them. But I would assume that being behind is nothing new to them either. <laughs> That's right. Well, the road of this championship game has been fraught with playing arch rivals and close games. And even as you say, Cole, coming from behind, they had to play Mountain Brook, one of their South Birmingham suburban rivals. They had to play their Hoover in city rival, Spain Park, in the playoffs. They've had a long, hard road to get here. So they are battle tested. Oh, and by the way, did I mention they're the defending state champion? But wow, you gotta give the Daphne Trojans so much credit for hanging in there through adversity. They've already had a 43 yard touchdown run called back, several critical penalties, but here they are back in the lead. Fair catch on the kickoff at the 23 yard line and that's where the Bucks will start from. So Ryan Carter, who's brought this team back so many times in the past, has perhaps one of his biggest challenges now. Absolutely, and this Daphne defense, so much momentum right now. Ken, they have spent the last few series wreaking havoc in the backfield. Number 88 there for uh, Hoover that you're looking at is uh, Denson. And uh, Denson has committed to Auburn University to play football there, so he's going to get used to these surroundings in a hurry. Second receiver in the last two games we've seen that's committed to Auburn. And that is him catching the football right on cue. Almost broken tackle at the 40-yard line. 17-yard gain on first down. That's what you want to see from your big-time players. Desire to have the football when the game is on the line. This little comeback route, but then it's after the catch. Stiff arm fighting for yards. First down play, ball on the Hoover 40. Carter with a handoff on the man around and a great stop on the play. 
the end around stop for a one yard gain. It was Dakota Daniel, his first carry of the football game on the carry. Roger Tate came up from that outside linebacker position, all 5'9", 175 pounds. The senior has 17 tackles for loss on the season, so he's active. He gave him a one yard gain, second down and nine. Play action pass. Carter's got Denson down the field and it's overthrown. Good defense on the play by Kendall Minifield. Minifield already has one interception and had another one. Uh, pressure, pressure in the face again. Came from number 98, Ryan Pugh, not the center that usually plays here for Auburn. <laughs> the defensive end for Daphne. We have a third down and nine. Critical play in this football game. Carter gets pressure, gets away from it, throws, caught. It is short of the first down as Denson makes the grab on the 49-yard line. We're going to have a fourth down play and another big decision coming up for Coach Niblett. Absolutely. Safety blitz. Not sure how Ryan Carter escapes that. It's, he blitzes the A-gap completely unscathed. Carter escapes, completes a pass. Now fourth and two. They have to get to the Daphne 49-yard line. Carter's going to throw for it. It is incomplete. No flags. Miscommunication there between Carter and Jalen Denson. And Daphne will take over when we come back. Seven to six, Trojans lead. You're watching the 6A title game on the Super 6 Network. It's the AHSAA Super 6 Tournament brought to you by Jax and the 6A final living up to its billing. First and 10, Daphne on the Hoover 49-yard line. They lead by one point. Handoff to TJ Yeldon over left tackle and Hoover will have none of that. And a flag goes down late. We'll see if there was a little extracurricular stuff going on. Yeah, it looks down like there. it's going to be a personal foul against Hoover. Just aggressive play. Didn't even hear the whistle. Personal foul on Hoover is the call. That'll be a 15 yard walk off. So now you have to consider, Ken, nine minutes, 11 seconds. How much of this clock can Daphne run? Now, Hoover has not, I don't believe. Well, they have taken one of their timeouts, so they have two remaining. And the ball marched all the way down to the 32-yard line. Hoover scored on a long pass from Ryan Carter to Reginald Johnson in the first quarter. Daphne answered with a one-yard run by T.J. Yeldon here in the early fourth quarter. The difference in the game, an extra point conversion by Daphne kicker Brandon Roberts. If you're just joining us, that's where we stand, seven to six, Daphne. First and 10 from the 32. Mosley wants more and it's picked off on the 15 yard line. Pass intended for Lamprakis. Wow. How about that for a play call? I have to be honest with you, when I saw him drop back, nothing positive was going through my head. Choosing to go upstairs, sails it right over the middle, interception, Buccaneers, the break that they needed. Well, the Daphne coaching staff choosing to go for the jugular, trying to go upstairs for a big play, and it backfires, and Hoover takes over on the 14-yard line. Daphne will call on that defense one last time. Ryan Carter out of the shotgun. That's been the formation they've started from all night long. The handoff goes up the middle to MacArthur, finds a gap, picks up a solid eight or nine yards up the middle. Put the ball down at about the 24, about a yard shy, second down. Michael Pierce had a grip on that jersey, thankfully didn't let go for Daphne fans. 
Or that ball could have gone to the house. Carter to MacArthur, and it'll depend on the spot. Officials are going to unstack the bodies. He had to get to the stripe at the 25 for the first down. And it is a first down. They'll move the chains. The Hoover Bucks, 14 and 0. They have won 21 games in a row. The Daphne Trojans, 14 and 0. Somebody walks home with the state title tonight. Carter, first down pass, and that's going to be picked off. Penalty marker down. Penalty marker down on the 42-yard line. There's a lot of pushing going on between Jalen Denson and Torn McCaster. The interception was made by Kendall Minifield, and let's get the call. Pass interference against Daphne. Wow. So instead of an interception by Minifield, Hoover's going to get a walk off and a first down in the vicinity of their 47 yard line. And Derek Minifield has got to be wondering what does he have to do? That's twice he's had interceptions brought back tonight. Well, the breaks for Hoover continue to mount here late in this ball game. They have to capitalize, take advantage. Ball put down on the 40. First and 10 bucks as they get a tremendous break in this game. Clock down to 8.03. Plenty of time, no need to be in a hurry. Quick play out on the far side, and the officials are going to stop that pre-snap. We have had a lot of laundry on the field in this game. Lots of penalties for a championship game. Bucks get a false start. Five-yard walk-off back to the 35. First and 15. Miscues in the late going by both sides. Carter, play action fake, throws. It's caught by Denson. That makes up the penalty yards and no more. Tackled immediately by Torin McGaster. Watch this pickup by Justin McCarthy. Can't really see it in the replay there. Number seven for Hoover, tailback. Steps up and takes on defensive end Eric Lee and pancakes the young man. Spot the ball in the 41, so make it a six yard gain for Denson. We mentioned earlier he has already verbally committed to Auburn, so he'll be playing a lot of football in this stadium. That wild look on defense, no down lineman. Carter gets pressure, launches it out to the far sideline, incomplete. That was Reginald Johnson, the intended receiver. He's already caught a touchdown pass, but nicely defended that time by Jonathan McGaster. Just takes another shot down the field. Good coverage. Third down nine. And another critical third and long play coming up for Hoover. Clock down to 7-17. Carter surveys the defense. Getting some heat. Nice step up. Throws the football incomplete. Looked like the receiver slipped on the play and the ball went through his hands as he fell off balance. Josh Jackson was the intended receiver. You see he just slips, tries to get up and recover, unable to get upstairs and catch that football. And so Josh Niblett is electing to punt here on fourth down and nine. Over seven minutes left, still has two timeouts, so I think this is the right decision. Israel Lamprakis back to field this punt, but he'll let it bounce, and it's going to take a Hoover roll all the way back to almost the 21-yard line. That's a great kick, almost 49 yards. All right, now Daphne 
doing such a good job of controlling the ball here in the second half. Can they get some first downs? Can they run some clock? We're just under the seven minute mark. If you're just joining us. You've come at just the right time. Daphne leading Hoover by one thin point in the 6A state championship game. Mosley hands it off to Holloway. Nothing there. The loss of a yard. Good stop by that Hoover defense. Terrence Glaze again right there in the middle. He's been a staple on that Buccaneer defense all night. So active from his linebacker position. Expect Hoover to have those safeties walked up towards the line of scrimmage. Linebackers inching up just behind the defensive lineman. Second down and 11. The ball is on the Daphne 20. Looking to throw the screen. Gets it out here short. Penalty marker goes down, and Holloway is back to the line of scrimmage. 